it's starting to starting to uh, get uh, towards the end of the second second day. How's everyone doing so far? Are you guys enjoying? Great. So uh, we at Slosh, um, we are all about helping the next uh, generation of founders forward, and uh, because of that. Uh, one of the highlights of, of our of our content is is the pitching contest, uh, where we uh, help some up and coming up and coming companies uh, to get to the next level. And uh, today, I'm I'm really excited to uh, invite on stage uh, the two of the winners of of last year's pitch contest that we organized here in Tokyo. So. Uh, Kate and, and Hiroshi, uh, welcome to Slash Tokyo 2017. Thank you so much. You. Uh, it was really exciting to be here again. I think the, the whole section is getting bigger and bigger, and there are a lot of people coming. So I think the size is even bigger than last year. Yeah, um, we had last year something around 4,000. Uh, according to our calculation, it seems like five. So. 5,000 this year, so some, some growth happening there. Um, how have you guys been uh, doing after this year? Uh, if we start with you, Hiroshi, uh, uh, what have you been up to uh, recently? Yeah, uh, last year uh, we tried to expand our business overseas. Uh, we tried to uh, exhibit uh, exhibited, uh, many trade shows around the world, uh, Singapore, uh, USA, and France, China, and uh, I forgot. <laughs> but <laughs> we had, yeah, we had uh, tried to find our uh, new partner and investor and distributor. Um, but I feel it was not easy to find a good partner because uh, the culture, business culture, is different from Japan and. Uh, the uh, price is different, yes. So I ha we have to uh, change and adapt mm. how we sell our product. Yes, and and uh, yeah, that sounds very interesting. We would love to hear some more details. How is it? How is it in Japan and how is it elsewhere? Yeah, uh, recently uh, we hired a Chinese manager. And uh, she tr tried to sell our product to China. Yeah. Now uh, we also have our, our, our own location in China. Yeah, Huddle location, Huddle field, where people can play Huddle. But we want to increase more. Yeah. Until 2020, we want to ex increase our location to uh, 60, 600, 600 places. So main. Our main targets are Japan and China and USA. So we try to hire country manager in China and USA. And they try to expand. Great. Um, what about you, Kate? Uh, what have you been uh, up to recently? Uh, I see on Facebook you seem to be traveling a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I travel to a lot of countries, especially focused on Asia Pacific, because um, that's our target market. So right now our team has grown from 20 people to 40 people. Wow. And we also have office in Beijing, Shanghai. I hope we can very fast get, a com uh, get an office here in Tokyo. So like uh, we have been working with more than 40 brands since last May. Uh, right now we're working like really closely with our customers and it's it's amazing to know that our solution can not just only be put in a fashion related industry but also some jewelry manufacturer of furniture you can imagine that we can put solution in that kind of places and do the analysis like yesterday there's a company from France that we, we actually set a meeting here to discuss how we can work together. So I would say that um, such Tokyo not just bring us an opportunity to open like our vision in a startup field, but also open a gate to get more business. 
Great. Uh, is there any like uh, more specific cases uh, about uh, uh, you mentioned like fashion and, and uh, some some industries where you've been working? But yes. Any any interesting delicious stories that this one time we worked uh -huh. with this kind of partner and then this kind of thing uh -huh. happened? Uh, any? I'm sure you have a lot of stories from <laughs> around the world. Anything yeah. you? you would like to share with our audience? Um, I would like to talk a little bit about this industry because when we're talking about retail, we're thinking about, okay, manufacturer, they may make something and put in market to be uh, sold and also to get by, by those uh, shopper. But I would like to mention about the age is pretty different right now. This is a shopper driven age. So what it means is like the customer decide what they want to buy and what they need. So this is always what we tell our customer. You need to find out a preference of your shopper. And of course, they are not going to tell you, this is what I want, or this is too expensive. They will only tell you by their physical behavior. So that's why we're using camera to analyze those shopper behavior inside the store that is really difficult to be remembered and to be analyzed by human brains. And um, so there's also a little bit different from what we do from last year. Uh, when we're doing last year, we mainly use the video analysis and also like data analysis. But uh, ever since from the end of last year, uh, we released our uh, alternative weapon, which is the AI technology. So right now we use AI technology to help our customer to analyze, for example, if this is a human hand, and if this human is touching the product, experiencing product, or he's just looking. So this is our next step of uh, to bring a new, brand new technology uh, to a traditional industry, which is the retail business. Thanks, um, Hiroshi. Um one trend that I've noticed in this year's event and last year's event, um, I hear so much more talk about uh, VR and AR yeah, uh, yeah. this year compared to last year. Um, I mean, in your industry, is one year like a very long time? Has a lot of things yeah, happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is everything very different from last year? Can you yeah, tell us uh, a little bit about the industry? Yeah. Now, uh, many countries and many, uh, many startups uh, try to develop a new product, a new VR product, and hardware and also software. So de developing quickly, yeah, very quickly. And for example, in CES, the beginning of this year event, uh, we found uh, a lot of product, new technology, yes. So. Last year, uh, yeah, we also s start our business and uh, launch the Hado World Cup. Yeah, this is the first uh, techno, techno sports event we held, and we also develop our Hado as a new sports using AR technology. This is niche now, but uh, this market will. Im will uh, grow in the future, I think. So we invest uh, this uh, techno sport market. I see. Um, I, I, I'm a, myself earlier from, uh, from the games industry. I work, used to work for this company that makes, makes uh, Angry Birds. But uh, I saw also in gaming, like also events and esports seems to be a, a, a bigger trend. Um, Maybe not there. I'm not sure if everybody is, is familiar with uh, this, this sort of sports uh, that you, you guys are, are uh, doing. Or, like, obviously they know about you guys, but like, there are probably some other players involved in the space. Um, have you, have you uh, found out about something uh, really interesting when building this uh, Hado World Cup uh, uh, yeah, recently? Yeah, yeah. It's the esports market is growing. Yeah, uh, like as sports market, uh, we can grow the techno sports market using AR or VR technology. Yes, yeah, and we are first uh, pioneer of it. I see. Got it. Um, 
What about, um, uh, Kate just mentioned that they have hired a lot of new folks after last year. Uh, what about you guys? Is uh, Are you guys going, uh, uh, you mentioned that you're opening opening more offices and maybe thinking of hiring country manager. Uh, where is the where is the team team going for you guys? Which direction? Which direction? Which direction? As in, like, are you hiring a lot, or in also in Japan, or only the country yeah, manager? Yeah, obviously we based in Japan, and uh, we have 20 members now in Tokyo, and we also uh, uh, develop our branch in China and USA uh, this year. Uh, so we hi we are hiring uh, US manager now. Yes. But it is not easy to hire, yeah. uh, find a good, good person. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yes. Um, what about uh, then, like, if you look uh, next, what is up for you, both of you guys next? Um, you, you both have been active in hiring. Uh, what, what, does, what does Skyrec want to get done next? Okay, um, so right now we are at a stage of collecting all those data. Of course, big data is still an issue. And the next step will be we're going to build an expert system. So when you think about access system, you are think of, okay, if you have some question about running your store today, you can ask one system online and ask questions like, okay, how much revenue can I expect? during the annual sales. Then this computer will answer your question directly. And you can also ask him how come that I didn't catch up with my sales target. He will also tell you what happened in your store and what should be improved. So basically, we're trying to make everything automatically answering by the online robot. So that should be our next target. And we believe only if you make work efficient in not just uh, retail, but also old industry, then that can make more value. I see. Um, what if, what about um, uh, Hiroshi? Um, what about if we talk about uh, uh, investments uh, in, the, in the VR space uh, that you are in? How important uh, is it uh, to have investment? How easy? Uh, can companies like you uh, start growing your revenue and becoming profitable? And uh, how do you see that? Yeah, uh, now many companies try to monetize their business. Yes, and the VR market has started, just started. And AR market is not started yet. <laughs> and we are rare. We, we are using AR technology, but yeah. We are creating new sports industry, yes. And we sell our product to not consumer, uh, to uh, theme park or amusement center or family entertainment center. Yeah, B2B, B2B business we are doing. And we call it locate-based based, uh, AR entertainment, yes. This kind of business starts, started fast in real industry, yes, it is easy to monetize compared to consumer business. I mm -hmm. think so. So next step, uh, we want to change our business to consumer, consumer business. Yes, uh, until 2020. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, the this Olympics is, is a very important uh, yeah. year for you. Yeah, this is a big challenge, and uh, big thing. You know, we have to approach too many people, many people to create new sports industry like soccer. Yeah, around the world, so every every people, many people play soccer. Yes, we want to make huddle like soccer. Yeah, regular sports. And the AR and VR or uh, new technology have potential to do it. I think so. So, which year will uh, huddle huddle World Cup be in the Olympics? 2020, or yeah, maybe yeah, four yeah. years after that. Yeah, last year we start Hard World Cup, uh, and uh, this year also uh, we had we will uh, we will hold and uh, not only player but also audience can enjoy the tournament. Yeah, watching watching TV or 
uh, internet, and then ca they can enjoy the game. It is necessary to new sports uh, sports industry. And 2020, we want to show showcase our hado as a new sports, new culture in Japan to the world. This is a big point, 2020. Yeah. So, yeah, if it, if it takes you uh, a long time to get into the Olympics, we could, we, after this session, maybe we could uh, fix the Hado World uh, uh, Championships to Slash Tokyo 2018, maybe. So yeah. let's, let's talk more backstage. Um, what about, uh, Kate, you guys? Uh, in your uh, field, how important uh, is having an investment and uh, like how easy is it to get profitable and uh, uh, uh -huh. increase revenue? Um, our business is pretty interesting because we actually charge our customer like monthly. So that's monthly subscription fee. Uh, we recently received some cases they want to uh, extend those contracts from two years, three years to five years. And that's an exciting news for us because we knew that we're, we already found some uh, interesting analysis for our customers, so they, they are willing to extend the usage of those service. So um, basically, I would say if we're looking into like investment in this company, in this industry, uh, I would definitely recruit more AI technology expert. And also like the marketing, marketing thing is very important to us. Like ever since Slash Asia last year and t this year Slash Tokyo. So ever since last year, we have been reported by multiple media, including uh, the newspaper, magazine, online media. And we found the feedback from the marketing part is really huge. I, I got like released on newspaper uh, once. Then the next day, they were, be, they were like 10 customers calling to our office. So basically, that's, that's showing that people are looking for a solution. They just need a way to find out where the solution is. And I, I think that just like media and also like this kind of star event can only re, uh, help to the startups. Yeah. I see, I see. Um, uh, at this year's Lush Tokyo, uh, we've been running over there. We've been running a pitch contest of uh, 80 mm -hmm. different startups. Uh, from all kinds of countries, all kinds of industries. Um, what kind of advice would both of you guys have to the people who have pitched mm. today? And uh, later today, we will have the pitch contest final here on this stage, and uh, we will have some winners. Again, what kind of uh, advice would you give uh, to the people who are in the position that you were in last year? What, what, do you, what kind of advice would you, Hiroshi, give to these? Uh, to the speaker? Uh, to the startups of to the pitch startup. contest this year. You are now their senpai. You've been, uh, you're one year <laughs> ahead of them. What, uh, what kind of advice do you have uh, to the pitch, uh, startups in the pitch contest this year? Uh, not finalists. Not too finalists. Uh, all, all the startups all in the pitch startup. contest. Uh, yeah. Uh, not in. Not only in pitch, yeah, but also, yeah. Yeah. Or in, in the. More general, right, yeah. Uh, fascinate uh, people yeah, around you and around the world. Yeah. Uh, if you can fascinate people, the many great engineers and the many great uh, business people can help you. Yeah. Yes. And how about big vision? Mm -hmm. uh, also. Yeah. 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 Big and Fascinating vision is very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is, is uh, fascinating the people important because you're in the entertainment industry? Yes, of is, course. Is, for example, is it important for a fintech company to fa uh, fascinate their customers or is it more in your area? In your area? Uh, in your field, in entertainment, it's uh, very important to fascinate people, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, not only entertainment, but also any. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any industry, yeah, it is necessary. Okay, I yeah, got it. Of course. What about you, Kate? What kind of advice would you give uh, to the up-and-coming uh, 
startups this okay. year? Okay, um, I have a lot of experience to share since I've been pitching all the time. And the first thing I would like to remind guys is don't panic. That's very simple, but it's really hard to, to do it. Don't panic. Uh, last year at a final contest, I was sort of like pushing to stage when I was not so expecting that I should get off the stage. I got a stage earlier than I thought. So when I came out of stage, um, to be honest, uh, they were blank in my head. But I tried to get myself back and give the best performance I can. So try to be calm. And no matter what kind of emergency you ever meet when you're doing a pitch, don't, don't think about it. Just finish it. And the second thing is, if you're on stage, you are the king and you are the queen. So be confident. And you, you already made it to the final, which means you definitely have something that's better than others. So you should be confident about yourself and tell others about your company, how great you are, and what other potentials you have. And these are very important keywords to those finalists later. And also like, if you're like me, you're doing a B2B business, and it's really hard for people to understand what your business is about, try to use image. Those picture image to show people the simple idea to explain your company. Thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big hand to Kate and Hiroshi. Thank you.